Welcome to Ask the $50 Billion Man with High Performance Executive Success Coach, Dan Pena. The only show where you ask and you get complete, no holds barred answers. You want the truth? Can you handle the truth? Ask only if you dare. Head on to www.askthe50billiondollarman.com to submit your questions. And now, your host, Dan Pena. Hi, kids. Uh, welcome to Podcast 19 uh, uh, for uh, questions for the uh, $50 billion man. We're going to start with a few um, from the voicemail. Um, the first question has got a long introduction, but I'm going to give you a, a, a summary of the long introduction. It's a guy who's been a, uh, a cop, a policeman all his life in the UK, uh, down in England. Uh, he uh, was a high-performance guy. He was in a special unit. Uh, and um, uh, after uh, listening to uh, QLA, uh, first time about uh, a year and a half ago, <clears throat> changed his life. Uh, the, um, he ultimately um, stopped being a, uh, a policeman, uh, much to the surprise of everybody around him because he had a, one of the premier jobs in, in, in police. Uh, and uh, his question that he's about to ask me, because we've cut that part out, is related to a personal matter, so we're going to play the question now. Go ahead, play. But the question really down relates, in fact, to a personal matter, and that's to family matters whilst doing everything you can to be all you can be. Uh, sometimes in relationships, your partner may not necessarily have a high tolerance to risk. Um, I was just wondering, in, in, within your own relationship, within the, the years you've been married, Dan, how you have managed those times where things must have been very tough. You've been working very hard, you've been working away from home, and I just wonder if you had any advice to any, any of us out there following your QLA methodology about pushing forward, achieving all that you possibly can, and being all that you can be, while still having a marriage that is strong and is happy. So that's my question, Dan. Again, sincere and genuine, many thanks. Okay. Um, the summary of his question is how uh, you utilize QLA, being all that you can be, and still maintain a strong, healthy marriage because there must be tough times because you're gone and you're, uh, you're assuming risk and, and not all spouses uh, uh, are uh, adept to uh, assume risk. Well, one of, one of the precepts of being a high-performance person is not sharing doubts. And like I tell everybody, uh, I, I never came home and uh, told, my wife said, how was it today? And I said, every day was terrific. I don't give a fuck if I got my balls handed to me on a platter. I got my heart cut out. Every day was f fucking terrific. And uh, the, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, uh, our significant others, one, uh, not all of them got married for security. I don't mean it that way because they're not less than us. But they, uh, I, I equate it to them being like a, a baby kangaroo in a kangaroo pouch. They want that warmth and security. And you telling them how tough it is out there uh, doesn't accomplish much other than make them uncomfortable and nervous. So the only pe person you share doubts with is your mentor. And I hope this uh, uh, former policeman has a mentor. Um, and always be positive. Always be upbeat no matter what happens. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. Always, always, always be upbeat, never share doubts. That's my advice, uh, and um, the, uh, you do uh, great. Uh, thank you for your service as a policeman. As you know, I've talked about many times, my father was a 28-year veteran of the Los Angeles Police Department, um, and uh, so I understand the stress of being from a policeman's family from that perspective, uh, and I look forward to you attending the council someday. Okay, next. Uh, small business owner, I've got one small business that's currently doing well, looking to get into the QLA, QLA method and really start maximizing uh, my dreams. I don't have any experience working with any boards or uh, those kind of types of businesses. My question is, when approaching my dream team, is there certain verbiage or certain ideas to express to them to get them on board, or is it simply, this is my big idea, 
I'm looking for someone with a proven track record. Do you want to be a part of it? Uh, uh, no, there's more to it than that. And uh, in all my free material and uh, on my website and more recently on Dan Lokes' QLA website that uh, he has posted um, uh, with my permission as opposed to all you guys having to go to Torrent, uh, there are actually scripts uh, and templates that you use. Um, but uh, and uh, LinkedIn is a great source. Um, and, uh, you know, my name is Joe Jones. I see that, uh, you know, I, I'm impressed with your uh, track record in XYZ. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm putting together a, a team to uh, consolidate uh, this fragmented industry. And, I, uh, and I'm looking for board members, uh, founding board members uh, that will receive uh, uh, founders equity free. And uh, I'd like to have a, a few minutes of your time. Um, thank you very much. It's, it's pretty simple and you'll get better with it with practice. Don't start on your first uh, best prospects for the board. Uh, first, you start with a second or third tier and uh, you work your way up because you'll, you'll be stepping on your dick a few times until you get better at it. Good luck to you. Next question. Hi, Dan. A uh, big fan of all your content. I'm a young entrepreneur, and I, I thought I'd put straight to the point, no BS. I have a question. Regarding goal setting, uh, in Think and Grow Rich, one of the books you, one of the very few books that you say you recommend, it, it talks about when you set a goal, you should put a time limit and a very specific amount of money that you want to achieve with it. But I know you said when you set goals, you shouldn't necessarily put time limits on it. In the visions and goal sheet that you have on your website, um, it's not really, I, I wasn't really clear on whether or not you should set solid timelines because the description says to set goals of a vision that you want your life to look like in two or three years' time. I didn't know if that was very um, literal or if it was just a more generalized in the future idea. When you set goals, um, particularly short term, as in one to two years or possibly one to five years, do you want to set very, very solid parameters around the timeline with it? Or do you want to just set it so that you want to achieve that as fast as humanly possible? As fast as humanly possible. <clears throat> and although I recommend a few books, uh, I don't recommend 100% uh, of what they say. So if, some, uh, if one or two of the books that uh, I recommend talk about uh, finite time limits, I don't agree with that. Uh, <clears throat> it's as soon as humanly possible. Uh, and so there are no one or two or uh, one to five year goals. They're all as soon as fast as humanly possible. And when you visualize your affirmation, although you didn't ask it, when you visualize your affirmations in conjunction with those goals, you want to see yourself as the way you look now, not as you look one or two years from now or five years from now. Uh, uh, so when your subconscious is working on uh, <clears throat> those goals, um, when you're asleep, uh, it's seeing you doing it tomorrow, uh, and not in, in a year or two. Uh, but um, the, and you want the goals <clears throat> to be as specific as possible, uh, and um, the uh, you know like I want a ten million dollar home overlooking a bluff uh, of uh, San Francisco Bay. And I see my yacht uh, moored in the dock. That kind of thing. Good luck to you. Okay, we'll take another one from voicemail. Hi Dan. I wanted to ask, how do I pitch or how do I set up my pitch to an angel investor? Okay, uh, it's how do I pitch or how do I set up my pitch to an angel investor? Well, if, uh, unless you have a mentor and a dream team, uh, uh, you want to sell yourself. Um, it's, not, it's not the idea. It's like I would rather you know, invest in uh, an average plan with an extraordinary uh, worker <clears throat> as opposed to a terrific plan with a, a, a mediocre worker uh, or an entrepreneur or founder. So th the pitch isn't as important as you. You know, go dress for success, looking professional uh, and to the point, uh, and uh, they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, the rest will follow from there. Next. Thank you for the opportunity for having this uh, questionnaire. My name is Paul, Paul May, and my question is to you is, 
if I am a low income, but I say that in, uh, in part uh, by your uh, information that I think that you're sharing, will I also be able to qualify to uh, take part in your uh, uh, the CASO uh, seminar as well? So he's asking me um, the uh, how 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 does he qualify? I believe how does he qualify to attend the uh, Guthrie Castle as a low income? I assume he means the on the PPP penny payment plan. You have to submit your name. Uh, we ask you a lot of questions to fill out, which includes your uh, gross income, your wife's income, or his partner's income, your net income, your expenses, and we ascertain if you qualify, you qualify. Uh, students have a similar. Uh, uh, format to follow, and uh, more recently, we've just uh, accepted uh, uh, military uh, into the seminar, which even have different parameters than the students. So I uh, submit it, and, uh, and you know, uh, we take uh, one or two per uh, seminar, and uh, hopefully you can qualify. Good luck to you. I would like to uh, ask Mr. Pena, um, I'm a general contractor, However, uh, I have, it's hard to find the passion other than uh, scuba diving, snorkeling in the Bahamas. I mean, uh, I have no passion. I would love to be a builder, high rises, sky rises, custom homes. I mean, that would be an ego trip. Um, that would be great. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I'm a general contractor. Um, I do okay with uh, property management companies, apartment management companies, doing reconstruction and maintenance, but I'm not passionate about passionate about what I do. And uh, my question to him would be is how, I know you have to do some soul searching, but how do you find what you're passionate about? Uh, I could throw the football every day for 24 hours. I mean, I'm passionate about football. However, you know, that doesn't make me a living. Uh, how does one find passionate? <clears throat> well, not easily. But you're uh, not going to find it continuing to do something that you're not passionate about. It sounds like you just bought yourself a, a job as a general contractor. You say you do all right with it, so, you know, that, that, that doesn't uh, instill any confidence in me that you make any uh, uh, serious money. The fact that you can, uh, you know, uh, go scuba diving for 24, you can go scuba diving all the time in the Bahamas, uh, doesn't uh, uh, instill much confidence in me either. Uh, the fact that you can play football 24 hours a day, uh, maybe you're a young guy, that doesn't instill much confidence in, in, in me, and it really doesn't instill any confidence in you. You've got to look for something that you really love. You know, uh, can you find a job that uh, uh, evolves around scuba diving, a scuba shop, or buy up a, a, a group of scuba shops, et cetera? Or can you uh, um, develop a, uh, an endeavor that uh, evolves around uh, football? I don't know. But it's certainly not what you're doing now. And uh, the longer you wait, the harder it'll get. Thank you. Good luck to you. Just sitting in the bar at the club, uh, have a couple of schmedics. And it occurred to me that you know I grew up poor in a farm town. The only recreation that we had outside of work was uh, powerlifting gym, which is probably why I'm so damn big, and uh, judo, which is how I got my start in martial arts. So I've been doing that since I was a kid. And um, anyway, everybody else plays tennis or golf. So my question is, so I play golf. You know, I live on a golf course and right next to a couple of them. Or do I take up tennis? You know, tennis seems a little bit shorter. I don't know that I have the patience for either one, but would you play tennis or would you play golf or would you just say fuck it and go do something else? Uh, I try them both. You know, I, I was a big weightlifter for many, many years. Uh, I played tennis and golf. played tennis till my knees went out uh, uh, from running so many miles on the hard pavement. And I uh, played golf for uh, the better part of 50 years until uh, my, uh, you know, my arthritis and my shoulder this kept me from uh, being able to participate well in golf because I don't like playing golf half-ass because I used to be a, a really good golfer. Uh, but d don't do something just because it's novel or it's the thing to do. I mean, uh, do it because uh, you want to do it. 
Uh, and um, the um, but judo is good. Uh, martial arts is good. I have a lot of respect for martial arts. Uh, and the uh, although I didn't, I wasn't formally trained in martial arts. Although uh, uh, all the years I was in the military, uh, you know, I certainly was trained uh, in the military martial arts. But uh, try golf and try tennis. Good luck to you. Um, still not sure if I should call in and ask or uh, talk to Dan or talk to Mr. Pena. I think probably Mr. Pena will be uh, more appropriate. The more I read and the more I learn, the more I feel like I uh, need to know. Anyway, my question is this. I set up a meeting with a banker who's new to town. It's a new bank, and I'm going to go in and uh, – follow some of the instructions that I read in the book last night. I'll probably go through and practice that about 100 times. Um, so I'm going in next week, and I wanted to take notes. And I was just wondering if you had any tips for taking notes. I thought I saw in, in the book that it's okay to take notes, but it wasn't uh, wasn't explicit or there were no tips. So. Yeah, I, uh, I believe very much in taking notes at meetings. Uh, the... Um uh, I don't think it's insulting at all, uh, and uh, the uh, but make sure you practice uh, the um, your uh, pitch before you go in. I had a question. I've been uh, looking for a mentor again for kind of the next uh, project I'm working on. My previous mentors retired. City of Silver Company here. Locally, for international budget, we're here locally. We stuff me, and I uh, wanted to make contact. It's been following some of the things I've been doing. And my question is, should I use someone that I've used before with a different project as a mentor? I really like this guy. He's definitely not experienced in an industry that uh, I want to get into at this time. But he has wise and practical counsel and. He's always very good at keeping me accountable. So that's my question. Do I circle back and pick up a previous mentor, or do I look for something that's more aligned or somebody who's more aligned with where I want to go? I'm just afraid maybe. Well, I mean, if you were successful with a previous mentor, then I'd go with him. If he gives you good practical counsel and he makes you accountable, I mean, it's not mandatory that he uh, understand uh, uh, in any great detail the, um, the area that you're going into. But uh, if your results were good, if your results weren't so good, irrespective of his practical counsel, I would uh, go to find somebody new. Good luck to you. Hey, Dan. My name's Matt. I'm calling in from New Jersey. I have a manufacturing business out here, and I'm looking to grow it, and I'm getting a lot of use out of the motivational stuff you've been putting out. But I have a question, because I have another interest that uh, takes up a lot of my time. And I notice that when I'm really focused on one, it's hard to cycle back onto, onto the business stuff. So I was wondering if you could give me any tips on how to um, just really get that laser focus on, on the thing that I'm working on when I'm working on it. Well, generally speaking, I mean, you should only be laser being focused on one thing. So I don't know what the other thing is you spend a lot of time on. If it's a hobby or something like that, I would spend less time on it. Uh, hobbies are great for relaxation. If you need relaxation, I didn't, I, I didn't really need much relaxation. Uh, but if it's another business idea, I mean, <clears throat> it's tough to know how to spread your time. So I would uh, do like Clausewitz, the famous Prussian general, said, I was focused on the few and not the many. It's a lot easier to stay focused when you're focused on just one or one thing. Good luck to you. Hey, Dan. Um, I hope you can help me out because I'm trying to decide on something, on something rather important. Now, I'm currently a computer science student on my first year, actually. And I really don't feel that this is you know, um, what I want to be doing in the future. And I'm trying to decide uh, whether I should change my studies and possibly, you know, go into business because that's definitely what I want to be doing. However, it's a pretty big decision for me, especially, you know, everyone's counting on me to get these computer science studies done. And to be honest, these are one of the best here in my country. And I just, you know, 
I need some tips, some advice, especially from someone like you, uh, on what I should do. Well, if you don't like computer science, forget about it. Fuck it. You got to move on. Because you'll just be a, a sorry bastard down the road. And even though all these people are depending on you, you know, you, gotta, you, you, know, you can't love and help anybody else until you love yourself. And uh, you won't love yourself if you do something that you're not happy with. So um, I would look at, um, at business, uh, transferring uh, one way of doing it. I, I wouldn't do it this way, but one way of doing it is take some business courses. It might uh, lengthen the time that you uh, take to graduate, but I take some business courses and see if you like them any better than computer science. Good luck to you. You've made it clear that passion is an absolute necessity to achieving the ultimate goal of being a top performer. Um, you have said that you've bought and sold many types of businesses that led you to that success. But if you start a business out of passion, can you still reach that goal and stay in that business, or do you have to constantly be on the lookout for new opportunity in other areas? Um, I guess what would be Dan Pena's definition of passion? Thank you. Passion is something, um, people ask me why I continue to do this after 22 years. Um, the, uh, because I love doing it. I love uh, being uh, successful at pulling you kids across the goal line and, and some of you across uh, even uh, goal lines that you never even dreamt of. Um, the, uh, so I don't, I don't consider it work. If you don't consider it work and you consider it your passion uh, and you love it, then continue it with it and you can always find adjuncts, supplementary businesses, uh, complimentary businesses to stay with your passion. But I'd stay with my passion, absolutely. Good luck to you. Hello, Dan. This is Jeremiah calling in from London. May God bless you and your family and smile upon your efforts. What are some techniques that you've used throughout your life to increase your authority and your presence when you're in a room with equally high profile or capable individuals? Thanks. You only have one time to make a first impression. Uh, how you dress is a reflection of how you think of yourself. I uh, developed this uh, the three-piece uniform look, uh, you know, 30 plus years ago, and I added the pocket watch to it about 28 years ago. Uh, and uh, the uh, and I always uh, look good. I don't uh, dress too flamboyantly. I don't. Uh, I've never uh, been one to wear jewelry, uh, rings, etc. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, but that's how you increase your presence with other high profile people. You also uh, you know, think about what you're going to say and, and more importantly is always come prepared. When I go into a meeting, I'm uh, virtually always uh, the most prepared guy in the room. Uh, I know more about them than they know more about me. Uh, and that's easy to do once you're on, um, uh, once you get on LinkedIn and you use uh, not so much Facebook, but you use uh, Twitter uh, and more importantly, you use Google to uh, ascertain exactly who's going to be in the room. Always ask for who's going to be in the room. Always ask for an agenda if there is one. And if there is no agenda, you put together an agenda of what you want to accomplish and you set the agenda on the table, and you go through the points, and they'll, they'll be impressed. Good luck to you. OK, uh, we're done with the uh, voicemail. So now we're going to go back to the written questions. How do we live a free existence in, in a monetary, incentivized environment at, <clears throat> as the one we live in without being financially free? You don't. Uh, in this, uh, you can't be financially free uh, unless you, uh, you've learned how to monetize the system. Is there a minimum and a maximum size investment that a first time acquirer should target? No. Uh, there is no minimum or maximum. Uh, you want low hanging fruit. You want things that are uh, more readily available. Uh, you want a motivated seller. I want to become one of the wealthiest uh, men in the world. I don't uh, care what it takes. If I have to stay up days and nights to make my dream come true, I will do it. Uh, I will, I will, uh, I will, uh, in the time I have, I will do it in the time I have. I will not, I will not stop and, uh, uh, and I will do it. Uh, I will not sleep. I will do whatever it takes. Most of all, um, 
How or have you ever lived through great misery in order to achieve a goal? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't consider it great misery, but I'm sure you would have. If so, what are the most profound memories of such high level sacrifice and, um, and did it always pay off? Uh, yeah, it, all, it almost always paid off, but the uh, profound memories of such high uh, level of success or sacrifice was the high level of, sa of success I had. Was it worth the pain and the misery of achieving the goal? If you have to ask those questions, young person, I mean, uh, you're fucked. You know, uh, you need help. I mean, uh, no guts, no glory. I mean, uh, you either um, uh, you can live your life the way it is now and die with massive regrets, or you can do something about it. How do I know whether uh, it's quitting or just a, lo a, a logical, smart decision to cut loose a bad business? You don't. You don't know until it's uh, looked at retrospectively, in hindsight. Uh, but uh, your mentor will help you. 98% of the people live a mediocre life. Is that their fault because they haven't decided to st stop it? Or is it that because of the education system and upbringing and people around put uh, not useful info in their heads? I don't blame it on the education system because I, you know, even though I, I went to a, a fairly good university, I didn't, certainly didn't go to one of the top ones in, in the United States. Uh, and I came from the barrio uh, and uh, I came from poverty uh, and um, I know that I didn't want that. What drives you to perform at your best no matter what is going on externally or internally? Uh, really the love of myself and the uh, confidence I have in myself to be all that I can be. I know you are a massive Napoleon Hill fan, so what topic from his books, his many books, would you ask him to talk about uh, that you uh, feel best fits the QLA thinking and why? Well, I mean, most of uh, uh, Napoleon Hill is QLA. Um, the, uh, but if I were going to ask him to talk about it, I'd uh, have him talk about uh, pay price to action and the sacrifices that are required to be a high performance person. Are all participants, the, I'm, I guess he's talking about the um, uh, Guthrie Castle seminar, are all participants expected to have a business plan or running business prior to doing a course? No, they're not. Uh, about a quarter of the people don't even come in with an idea. Uh, they're looking for, the, for somebody to help them find their passion. Is the emphasis of the course built around teaching participants the fundamentals of financial world? No. Uh, the, actually, the fundamentals of financial world are simple. Uh, the basic emphasis of the course is to teach you how to uh, manage failure and how to uh, follow your dream. Will applicants who simply want to run their own one-man gang business suitable for the course? Yes, we can make your one-man gang uh, all, all that you can be. Is this course really only geared towards banker, trader, city people? I don't know how, where you get that from. You must not do your homework. It has nothing to do with banker, city, trader. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you do to get out of the most, most of life every single day? I get up with a positive attitude, and I keep a positive attitude no matter what happens to me. Uh, how would you rank, uh, rank I think, uh, the below attributes in order of priority? He lists purpose, self-confidence, enthusiasm, self-reliance, self-image, expertise. Um, I would say self-confidence, enthusiasm, uh, purpose, self-image, and expertise last. Uh, oh, he's got more. Preparation, oh, well, these are, this is another list. Preparation, character, self-discipline, extraordinary performance. I would list uh, self-discipline, character, preparation, and extraordinary performance. What was your biggest investment in yourself? The biggest investment in myself uh, was uh, starting uh, a uh, energy business in a uh, declining market and putting all my eggs in one basket. How do you handle the seventh basic, now this is good, how do you handle the seventh basic evil, which is more, more deeply seated and more often fatal than all the six fears in life? I mean, the susceptibility sus sus to negative influences. Hill writes, those who succeed in any calling must prepare their minds to resist the evil. He's talking about neg uh, negative influence, 
um, and, uh, and thinking negatively. I don't think negatively no matter what. I never have. And uh, the, uh, now I'm in the habit of thinking such positive things that it's virtually impossible for a negative thought to get into my mind. How did you master it? Uh, the seventh uh, basic evil seems to be the more difficult to master uh, because it strikes when you are not aware of its presence. How do you close your mind to the negative? Well, this kid's fucked up. If he thinks about all this shit, I mean, something's not right with you. Uh, but I can tell you, hang around with losers. Show me your friends and I'll show you your uh, future. You know, if you hang around with negative people, guess what, dipshit? You're going to think negative shit. It's that simple. Can you name three of your most damaging weaknesses? Uh, no. Well, yeah, I, I will. I don't have three. What are the doing to correct them? By what rules do you judge who is helpful and who is damaging to you? <clears throat> my, uh, my perseverance is both my strength and my weakness. Uh, the, uh, I'm not doing anything to correct my weaknesses. I'm only, I continue to improve my strengths. Uh, by what rules do you judge who is helpful and who is damaging you? I don't deal with people that damage you. Damage me, excuse me. Does it only take one week to figure out how to be successful at making money? No. It only takes one week to intellectually grasp the things that show you how to deal with your negative baggage and your lack of self-esteem and the lack of your emotional bank account. It takes you a lifetime to deal with it, and with that knowledge, you'll be able to create wealth. When it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, would your final words, uh, what would your final words be uh, in the world? When it's all said and done, when it's time for me to leave the planet, and they, and they throw dirt on me and the maggots eat my eyes out, I want to be remembered as the greatest high-performance coach that ever lived, uh, uh, similar to they think of uh, 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 Carnegie as the greatest entrepreneur that ever lived, uh, and similar to uh, they think of uh, uh, Think and Grow Rich author Napoleon Hill as uh, the greatest self-help uh, author who ever lived. Uh, what would my final words be um, to the world? Just fucking do it, you cunts. Can you give me any recommendations as to, uh, one, uh, I can somehow compensate these years as I'm well aware of the fact that other people are much further down the road than I am right now and somehow think that I need to catch up with them in order to remain competitive. And two, about how I can focus on one specific and proper goal. Okay, can you give me recommendations? Well, you can't, you can't make up for lost time. You're already fucked up. You're a product of your bad choices. Nothing you can do about that. I can only help you from this day forward. QLA can only help you from this day forward. Uh, and about how can I focus on one specific uh, goal? Make one goal that you're passionate about and stay focused on it. It's pretty simple. At the moment, my goals are uh, uh, total blur as millions of ideas start. Well, then you're fucked up. You know, you read too much shit, you hang around with morons. How do I know which goals are worth being pursued uh, and what strategies would you... I, don't re I, I can't recommend strategies to goals I don't know about, idiot. But what I can tell you is, based on what I hear you saying, is uh, you're hanging around with losers. How can a penniless, or a penniless, excuse me, College dropout, single man, living in a three, a third world country and approaching his uh, 30s, become a billionaire to help his family members and other people in his home country become rich as well. Uh, the, uh, first of all, uh, you sound like you're feeling sorry for yourself. Nobody forced you to uh, drop out of college. I'm not saying college education is the end all panacea. Uh, but uh, don't worry about being a billionaire. Find something that will help a billion people and you'll get wealthy and be able to help the country you're from. Can you buy transcendence or can you only become it? You can't buy transcendence, you can only become it. Um, can Dan explain the exact immediate process of how he personally reacts to bad news? The same way I react to good news. St steadfast, uh, the, uh, and I, as soon as I hear bad news, uh, it's not what happens to you in life, guys. It's how you react to what happens to you in life. I'm always upbeat, I'm always positive, 
uh, uh, for every uh, uh, cloud, there's a silver lining, and I look for opportunities in bad news. At the very, at the very instant that he gets the call that the funding has collapsed or the business is being liquidated, how does he ha uh, how does he handle, think, or behave at each stage? He's asking me. I think, okay, I don't think about what went wrong. What I think is, how do I make this into a new opportunity? Uh, is there any room at all uh, right at the start where he allows himself some emotional outburst, his famous swearing rants to get it uh, out of the way? No, I don't do that. When something gets fucked up, I just think about uh, how do I make this into a positive? Uh, or does he view all such emotion victim behaviors not even sort, short and intermediate as weaknesses? Yeah, they're victim behaviors, I agree. Uh, perhaps the first question out of his mind and mouth is explain to me the reason why this happened. No, it's not. That comes after we've fixed it, after we've been successful. Then I find out what went wrong. Uh, after the seminar at the castle, is it possible to play 18 holes of golf at St. Andrews? Of course it is. Uh, why exactly has to, what exactly has to click for a person in order for them to take massive action towards their dream without stopping until they accomplish them? They have, to, they, they have to get turned on by it. They have to get massively passionate about it. They have to, you know, have to fall in love with the idea. Mr. Pena, if you were 18 again with no capital and just a dream, what would you, uh, be the first action step? Well, first of all, when I was 18, I didn't have a dream, and I, had, well, I certainly had no capital. Uh, so that's a little hard for me to relate to. Um, but uh, I, I, I go and I find a mentor. I now know I could go find a mentor. Uh, would you pursue education or would you find a mentor? Exactly, I find a mentor. If you were a doofus like me without any money and had an opportunity to ask $50 billion man a question that could get in the free seminar, what would you ask? If you have to ask me this, then um, the, um, uh, you're probably not going to win. But uh, I'd, I'd ask, I would pay attention to the questions and I'd uh, attempt uh, uh, to ask a question that hasn't been asked. How do you know the difference between not getting stuff done because you are not passionate about that or because you are a lazy cunt who is not <laughs> disciplined? In other words, the difference between being a lazy cunt or the thing not being passion. What are your thoughts on this? Well, the, uh, most of you watching this are lazy cunts. I, I hate to say, tell you. Uh, because you had bad role models. Your parents loved you, but they weren't high-performance people. So, uh, you know, you've been told uh, all your life, you can do this, honey, you can do that, honey, and the truth of the matter is, no, you can't do anything you want to, you can't be anything you want to be in life unless you, you, you focus. Uh, so my, 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 my uh, thoughts are, you need to be around people that are passionate and focused. You know, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. One problem is that I have always been rather stoic. I like people, but I like money and success more, and I find myself often isolated because I'm trying to stay focused and not get sucked into the people's bullshit. That's good. Am I hurting my chances by being less social? No, you're not. Um, what, I and, uh, what I and I'm sure all your viewers want to know is what are some principles that you know from other people that you are strongly against and why? Well, the biggest is that it's hard to be successful. No, it's hard to raise money, which is not true. Uh, and uh, conventional wisdom is always, almost always wrong. Uh, the people that I'm, I'm surrounded by do not share the same success beliefs I do. Then you're wrong, around the wrong people. This situation has led me to being more introverted, in which I continue to, uh, in which I continue to read books, for motivation and work 10, 12 hours a day on my business. Well, don't read books. You only have to read four or five books. I've listed them uh, and read my book over and over again. You can get it um, uh, on uh, Torrent. Uh, I don't live in a city that has networking opportunities for my niche. What would you suggest for me to connect with uh, like-minded people from my dream team, etc.? LinkedIn, but move to a, a city, a bigger city, a bigger uh, um, population uh, where you have a, a better environment. Beyond those taught by Napoleon Hill, which techniques do you um, implement or uh, uh, which 
techniques do you implement or implemented to overcome, have implemented to overcome uh, the focus of your conscious and subconscious mind uh, on those fears? Um, I mean, Napoleon Hill says it pretty much, but I mean, uh, I've read uh, other books. Um, I've read a book I'm not recommending it by Theodore Roosevelt that says that you basically uh, step into the breach, you force yourself into um, uh, anxiety situations, and you get better at it. When I'm working on my company and I'm listening to your seminar recording of your podcast, and it's great, after listening to your podcast and learning more about you and the way you think, my uh, contest question for you is, at what point in your life did you know you were different? Um, I knew I was different uh, in high school. Uh, the, um, I didn't know how I was different, but I knew I was different. Uh, but when I volunteered for the draft at age 20 and went into the um, uh, Army, uh, and nobody else was volunteering for the draft except my two buddies, we went on the buddy plan, three of us, uh, I knew I was different. I knew I was different then. But when I graduated from OCS is when I really knew I was different. Uh, and I took that knowledge, that confidence, and the, the world has more or less been my oyster ever since. How do I determine who is worthy of uh, coming with me uh, on this journey? How do I select friends uh, or a girlfriend, wife? How can I find this out the fastest amount of time? Uh, well, I, I'm not so um, high on selecting friends. I mean, you don't have to ha be their friend to put them on the bus with you to success. You know, I don't love uh, and I'm not friendly with everybody I'm in business with. Uh, but you can find this out by taking risk and making mistakes. I've only found out you existed uh, in the last month or so from watching uh, the, the tube and reading your stuff. I gather that a huge component of high performance success comes down to emotional bank account. You mighty fucking right about that. I have no business, no ideas, no money, no understanding about anything uh, you teach and zero emotional confidence. You're in trouble. My question is, for someone with nothing, where do I start? Read all my shit that's free. Find a mentor. Find a passion. Uh, I live in Houston, Texas via Canada. How do you foresee capital controls affecting the future of how wealth is created? It's important uh, to make a lot of fucking money. However, I've noticed the way that the government's Federal Reserve, blah, 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 blah. All that's bullshit. You're fucked up. You're focusing on the wrong thing. Find a passion. Find a mentor. Hope everything is going great with you. I have two questions. One, when visualizing the success of a future business and financial amount, should you aim to visualize uh, in the same scene over and over, or is it okay to vary it? I like the same scene over and over. When you have a mentor who you believe will, uh, will uh, financial, uh, financial interest in you, should you make them aware that you have other mentors um, looking for other, um, or looking for other mentors? You shouldn't be looking for other mentors. It's all right to have a couple, but uh, um, if, you, if you don't like the one you have, uh, move on. Deep inside, what similarity do you find between you and Jesus and what? I don't find any similarity between uh, Jesus and I. Um, the other than uh, he seemed to be very focused. Question, would you ask him uh, that you uh, will think that could squeeze you to a heavenly castle? What, oh, what question could you ask me? Um, uh, nothing based on Jesus, although I'm a believer. Okay, kids, thanks. Uh, that's it for today uh, on this podcast. Peace uh, and God bless.